Well guys, after waiting four months for the rings for the XV1000, they have uh, finally arrived. So uh, let's get this top end assembled and uh, get the motor back in the bike. Okay, we've now got the, uh, the rings. I've just put the top ring into the bore, squared it up with the, uh, the piston. And I've just got the feelers out and got a nice fit there. And that came out to 0.44 of a millimeter. And the tolerance uh, for rings is between 0.3 and 0.5. So that's great. That's, that's come right back into uh, spec on those uh, uh, rings. And prior to that, it was uh, the worn rings were 0.7. So it's 0.2 mil outside the, uh, the tolerance. Okay, we're now ready to install the uh, piston and cylinder onto the, the motor. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, put a gasket on it. A new gasket here, encoded with um, copper coat. So we'll gently get that over, just letting the uh, cam guide line up. Now we can pop our dowels in. Put two dowels on the base of the uh, casing here. Just put a bit of assembly lube in there so they can come out. But they go in here. So. Okay. Next thing is to get the piston on. So a bit of oil on the small end bearing. We've got our piston with the uh, it's marked e EX for the exhaust that faces the exhaust port, which on the front cylinder is here. And that's that's it in there like that. Next we'll get um, the circlip on. Making sure we put a bit of rag over this because we don't want that circlip going down into the crankcase. And there's a bit of a bugger to get on actually. Okay, put a rag in to protect um, the crankcase and fit a new circlip onto the piston and that's the circlip in making sure it's in the groove a little bit tricky getting it in so, but uh, she's in okay gaskets on dowels are in and I've just put a piece of wire through the cam chain to hold it up slid the piston uh, the cylinder on okay I'm just uh, getting the rings into the uh, uh, cylinder here. I've got a, just the wooden uh, handle of the hammer here stopping this piston from going down. I'm just feeding the, the rings in but gently with a screwdriver to get them started in the um, cylinder bore. I'm just going around poking those rings in, keeping a bit of pressure on the Cylinder as it goes down, they're going in quite nice, slowly. But the actual cylinder is sort of tapered to help the rings get in. And down she goes. See, so you left that. Look, I'm going to take it back out again. Things you've got to watch out for, huh? So hopefully don't get these rings come out. Okay, the piston's now in. Cam chain guide damper is in. And the cam chain's out so we can slide this down now. And that's in. That wasn't too bad actually, getting those rings in. So we've got some bolts in here, 
these three bolts go in there to lock the cylinder down and these are tightened up to 10 newton meters okay uh, rear cylinders on uh, I've just placed the, uh, the head gasket and the uh, rocker cover o-ring in position uh, the rear cylinder is at top dead center where we did our marks when we built the bottom end they're still in position and the rear cylinder is at top dead center so it's now time to get the heads on and get the valves timed okay it's time to get the uh, rear head on um, now the if you have both uh, heads off or both cylinders off you should set the rear cylinder to top dead center which I've done and uh, the marks are lining up uh, and our position that we did uh, on the uh, bottom end rebuild the dots and now all that are in line so uh, a new head gasket has gone on and a new o-ring around the cam chain and here goes in the, uh, the tensioner itself that just drops into a little slot we'll lift up the head and we'll feed this wire through here to get our cam chain up And that's him down. Got my held cam chain is held with the, uh, the wire, dampeners in, and the dampeners in line. So next thing is to get some bolts on. Okay, we need to um, bolt the um, cylinder head down. On the rear, we've got these brackets which uh, go into the frame, and really they can only go one way. The I won't fit the other side but um, yeah th this side here sort of faces in on both sides they go on uh, get a little bit of grease on these bolts take the threads and uh, slightly different nuts on the rear one too Yeah, the, the, the front uh, head nuts are that big and the rear ones are this big. So there's four of these go onto those brackets. And we've got <coughs> two cap head bolts go down the cam side here. There's two, two bolts, cap air bolts go here. And they just uh, come into the side of the head here. Next to your uh, cam opening. There you go down. And we've got one isolated nut which goes in here next to the spark plug. Okay, it's time to uh, tighten up the uh, the head bolts and the big ones, the 12 mil ones. The first stage is 50 newton meters. Second stage is 64 newton meters. Uh, the 10 mil bolt is 40 newton meters, and the two 8 mil ones on the side are 20 newton meters. So I'll take these first ones up to 50. So I'm just doing a cross pattern. Okay. Let's see what we've got to there. Set 
second stage is 64 newton meters. 64 newton meters on the 12 more bolts. Okay, uh, 40 on this one. There we go. Bit of a Only just gets in that socket head. And 20 on the the 8mm ones. So I'll now do the three bolts at the bottom of the cylinder too. Yeah, the cylinder, bottom cylinder, three bottom cylinder ones are 11 newton meters. Okay, that's uh, the cylinder and the cylinder head and all the bolts are all tensioned up now. I'll swing the motor around and we'll have a look at the uh, camshaft chain and timing. Okay, we're, we're now ready to do the, uh, the cam timing and the cam chain installation. And the first thing we've done, right from the word go, is have the T marker lined up in the window. I've just temporarily put this cover on to make sure that's in line, which it is. And We've got our dimpled uh, dowel there in the uh, actual cam itself and this pointer here. Then we've got the dimple on the, the actual uh, cam sprocket itself, so we have to line them up. So I'll take this chain off and carefully get this cam into it, cam sprocket. Okay guys, well uh, you live and learn, um, I've just been going to put this sprocket on to the uh, uh, camshaft and I'd already put the cover on here for th uh, this one but actually the tensioner goes in here which is the movable one like this side here, that's the one that moves in and this is the damper. The damper just slots in down the bottom, but I didn't notice that the actual dampener also slots in to the top here as well. So you know I've had I shouldn't have put that cover on. That cover should have been on that side, and this dampener should be slotted in there. So I'm going to have to uh, loosen this head back off again and get that in position and slot that into there. You see that? Make sure that damper goes into that slot as well. Trap for young players like me. There we go, so tighten the head back down again. Okay, the uh, head bolts have been uh, re-tightened and I've swapped this cover from the front, uh, from the rear to the front of the, the rear cylinder. And now we have our <coughs> damper, the damper in the right position. It's locked in the bottom and it's also locked in this screw up the top. Which I didn't see any mention in the manual about that, but anyway, live and learn. So just tighten these bolts up and then we'll get into the cam timing. The cam timing, uh, we've got our rear cylinder is on top dead center. And I put the, the cover temporarily on. I've hardly moved these, uh, these gears or, or the crank since installing the bottom end. I've lined up the pointer, uh, which as you remember from the uh, bottom installation, we aligned we aligned the, uh, the keyway with the inspection hole and the dimple in this cam. That was all in a straight line. So that's still in the same place. I've got my T-mark there and now I'm going to put this top sprocket on so that the dimple on this sprocket lines up with this pointer and the dowel is up the top here. Let's 
pretty close here, I bet. You wouldn't get another tooth, it's just a tiny, tiny little bit out on the, on the mark here, but that's going to be okay. Now the tensioner goes in. Now this is a Type B tensioner. Uh, it's got this hexagon nut on the top, and it's got this little ratchet that sort of ratchets itself in and stays in. But you take this tensioner nut off, and there's a spring in here. See that spring there? So I'll just leave that there for now. And if you pull this little tang back, you can reset that in there, like that. So I'll put this in. That goes in there like that. I'm just going to put this bolt into this camshaft because I think I'm pretty close. I've just annealed that uh, copper washer, just heating it up to red hot and dumping it in water just to soften it up before I put it back in. Put it on the nut and feed that into the Okay, that's that. You can hear the ratchet go out as I push that spring in. Okay, new gasket on there. That's tension that will tighten that up. And that's looking pretty good, I reckon. You can see that. that She's on top dead centre. Remember our woodruff key lined up with the inspection hole, lined up with the dimple on this gear. And now we have the dimple lined up with the pointer on the top there. Everything, all the cam timing, valve timing should all be, we just got to set the valves, but um, that should all be, all be okay. Okay, I'm just setting up to um, tension the uh, cam sprocket bolt, which is 55 Newton meters. And we'll just tighten that up. That's it. Nice and tight. We don't want that coming off. So, final check. I've just lightly put the cover on. And looking through the window here, I have set the rear cylinder on top dead centre with the T-mark. Cam chain is now on. And I have the dimple and the pointer lined up and the chain tensioned. So... That's all ready to go. Okay, I've uh, now assembled the uh, front cylinder to the, uh, to the motor. First thing I did, as you know from before, we had the rear cylinder on top dead center, which was lining the T-mark up with the pointer. Um, all I've done is wind it backwards to align up the straight line, which is the top dead center for the right-hand cylinder. Now I have the cam uh, sprocket installed. Uh, we've got our line mind marked up for top dead center on the front, on this side. The two dots on the gears are here are lined up, and the dimple, the dowel, lined up with the pointer here. Well, on the front one, we also have a uh, oil baffle that goes uh, with the concave uh, face out, and the dimple goes into the hole on the sprocket like so and that hole lines up with the uh, with the dimple oh the pointer on the casting that's in there 55 newton meters on the cam sprocket bolt Okay, our timing's all done, we're happy with that. Next thing to do is to check the uh, valve clearance. Uh, it's 0.1 on the inlet and 0.15 on the exhaust. So I'll just take these covers off. Yeah, that's nice. <coughs> happy with that. 
and the exhaust that gets set to 0.15 millimeter. That's nice. So back on with the covers. Now I'm just going to give this a final check. Uh, we'll just rotate it around. I've done it with the left, so I'm looking at my inlet valve here. Inlet valve opens, it closes, it's coming up to compression. I check my mark on my firewheel. And that's the front straight line mark lined up with a pointer there. And we have our inspection hole there on the on the uh, cam sprocket, and the dot here is in line. Notice that the other dot isn't there because that will only ever line up every 20 revolutions. So just beware of that. When you initially set it up, you do it that way, but it will needs to only ever line up every 20 revolutions. <coughs> but yeah, we're correct. T marks on, dots there and the point is here. We're all good. Okay, it's now time to uh, get the side cover on. I'm going to gasket on there with a copper coat on it. Put on the nails and put the screws in and uh, tighten them up. Then our oil filter will go in here. Okay, the clutch cover's on, so it's time to uh, get a new oil filter into the housing. Uh, the hole for the oil filter goes out, and we've got a rubber washer on the back. So that goes in there. A couple of O-rings on the actual cover, and a small O-ring here as well. <coughs> you can only really go one way. It's, a, it's an oil gallery that goes up the top. One, one by the one that's got the O-ring's got a bit of a step on it, the bolt. That one goes in here. Okie dokie. Hi guys, well, I've just been putting the alternator cover on and it started going tight, you know, like, it should just push on. It started going tight, so I put it, pulled it back off and examined a few areas. Now this area here, you have to be careful of this I reckon, because this spiral gear, it spirals into this gear and at the back here that it goes, it fits into this gear. Now that, you've got to make sure that that is fitted right in with this o-ring in there holding it in place. And I don't know if you can see that, but um, that should be sticking out. Yeah, this gear here, you can see it spirals in, but at the back in this gear is a set of teeth. Just make sure that this, this boss and this uh, slider and all this is in place, and this shaft is sticking out about that much to go into your, your outer cover. Mine wasn't to start off with. So I reckon that's the problem I had, but if you feel anything going tight, just pull her up and check a few things because that's one reason that you could possibly snap a cover. Okay, I've got the gasket on, and that um, starter mechanism, it goes into this bearing here. So it needs that amount of shaft sticking out for it to go into, which it wasn't in the first place. So let's try again and put this cover on. It just popped on there, but it shouldn't should go on easy. You feel it going tight? Check a few things out. Well, that's just about it for the uh, motor. I've uh, fitted the carbies. Um, the only thing that's got to go on is the uh, solenoid mechanism for the uh, starting motor. 
uh, which I'll do on, on when it's on the bike because um, there's a cable that runs around to the to this um, starting motor solenoid. So yeah, all we're gonna do is lift her lift her off here and uh, get her in the bike.